Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you had a good Friday, good week in the markets. January 20th. A lot of squeezy stuff still going on. Still developing news with GNS, Elbiz. We're gonna look at that. We're gonna look at uh, spy price action. This this OPEX has been so bullish. Um, GME, where it's at, BBBY. Um, the futures I keep averaging into. It's getting wild. Sub up, like up, comment down. Happy money sticks around. You can follow us on Twitter at Happy Money YT as well as discord link for those are in the description um we did a twitter spaces the other night you guys all missed out they weren't there um there's our twitter and our discord they're both free uh today i was more bearish than this but it being an opex and a big one this is the biggest notational value expiration of options we've had in 10 years so could expect big moves the big move ended up being to the upside. We are still in SLD, but uh, I guess it, it was outweighed by the options. Um, I'm not necessarily buying this rally, but uh, with how strong this is, I, I could see this being the beginning of another new high, another new uptrend, but I'm not quite there yet. Um, depending on how this closes, we've got about 30 minutes. This does close really bullish. Um, Monday could just be a big because now the options have expired. There's a lot of capital that can flow around and push things fast. So could be could be a big gap on Monday and gap and go and breaking that 400 level and basically a short squeeze on the market again. Uh, I do have shorts on the futures and I'll show you guys what I do with those today. GNS went up crazy last night after hours. So we talked about this yesterday. I bought in, uh, bought in right here. Wait, where did I buy in? Grab my VWAP. Uh, I'll show you guys what I did. So I bought in here, averaged in right here. I think I started with 500 shares here. Or I got a thousand worth here, and I got 500 worth here, or 200 worth. I had about $1,200 exposure. It went up like 140%, I think, after hours. I don't know, it was something crazy. Um, learning more about it. I mean, I, I like the story. I like what they're trying to do. Um, and yeah, I just, I want exposure to it. So basically I just held, um, this is pr pretty good profit taking on today. Still up tremendously up 58%, but, uh, you have to imagine there's going to be a lot of momentum traders, swing traders, day traders that are going to ride this. So, um, I do think this is probably some voluntary shorts that decided to start closing and shout out to subway cup. He said it was from a tweet that the CEO mentioned a special dividend coming at 7 15 or something in the morning and that's what really initiated this and then it turns out all this news with them being a task force to basically go after the naked shorts and the criminals suppressing their their share price via uh naked shorting and all the different tools they use to suppress the price so uh to me this looks like voluntary closing mixed with some momentum trading and we'll see i mean they they're talking about a dividend they haven't talk to any more about it special or special dividend what it'll be x dividend date once there's hard dates and numbers and that sort of thing things that will actually force a squeeze or closing of shorts i think we can see a big move on it then so i want exposure before then um hopefully it doesn't happen over the weekend because i'm not going to buy any right now but anyways uh that could definitely force shorts to close especially naked shorts um but again this i think was just voluntary this move so far so to give you a little picture of what could come like this is this might be just nothing right this wasn't i don't think this was a squeeze at all but this was uh 1100 from bottom to top there so yeah i'm gonna get more exposure to this hell biz i saw this thing, thing running today and i'm like did they join also that the ceo of genius because he's basically uh attracting other ceos from companies that think that their stock has been uh, manipulated and legally suppressed share price and uh, I was like this looks like they joined forces and then turns out because this thing was up like 150% this is one I bought into multiple times I've traded it but I like it for the long term too um, but it's just so volatile anyways turns out they did so the news was that that help is is uh, also going going after investigating the illegal short selling in their, in their company I, th I think along with the other CEO I think they're probably teaming up um, and potentially going to be using, I think, Wes Christian, the attorney that has been doing this for decades. 
Um, so yeah, it's it's very exciting to me. Um, so my help is, I, I I actually had it from a bit ago. So I was only up, I think I'm maybe about break even on now. But I averaged back into that. Oh, and then yeah, my GNS, I had to close this because of margin. So realize the profit on that, I think it's like 100% or so. And then help is, I think I'm about break even on, but I'd like more exposure to this and, and uh, GNS. Um, I think this is a, a great proof of concept already from what we've seen. And on our, on our streams today, I've been streaming, so hit the notification bell, jump on there. But um, yeah, we've been watching the videos, the interviews of uh, the, the CEO of this company that is basically just gathering as much data and CEOs that have been a part of this and having a revolution against it, basically. Um, I watched an interview today with him and the torchlight and that whole deal it went on, which is insane. I didn't know much about that. Um, then I've seen an interview with him and Wes Christian, so he's moving fast. I mean, this guy's not messing around. <laughs> he's, their company's only been public since April, and uh, yeah, they're getting to work. So uh, it's pretty exciting, and I think it's a great proof of concept for GME. I, I hope that Ryan Cohen has a very good reason for not of doing it this at this point. Um, and if if not, he I think he better get on it and get to it because he does have a he does have a fiduciary duty to us shareholders to make sure his his stock price is not being manipulated. Um, so, yeah, that that's my hope. Um, I'm wondering if maybe he thought the the split via dividend would would do it, and potentially it would have if it wasn't uh, corrupted and. They didn't just blatantly create more shares to offer the split, the brokerages. Um, I don't know. Maybe that was a failed attempt. But I think some more action needs to be taken. I don't know if he's on some sort of gag order or he has to be quiet or I, I we just we don't know. But I like what this CEO of G, GNS is doing, and uh, so yeah, it's a great proof of concept for someone like Ryan Cohen to really get get behind his shareholders and try and. Uh, Help out their investment because this is all we get from from our investment with GME is the share price. That's all we get. So, anyways, um, looks like spice coming down a little bit here. It's about freaking time. GME too. So GME's much more bullish today. Remember, I was thinking today would probably be red, uh, flat to red. I was saying, but a little bit green, up four and a half percent. BBBY down nine percent, but still holding on to that level. Here's to see by end of day where this thing ends. Sometimes these opexes, you'll get a crazy big move last 10 minutes, but that's usually with triple witchings and stuff, which I don't think today is, but um, yeah. So it bounced off this level down here a couple times, 33.50. A lot of options in the money. Uh, if it closed above three, that'd be good. 20,000 contracts there, that three strike. Over three and a half would be crazy. I don't think they'll do that. Uh, I feel like they'll tr probably try and push it under three, but we'll see. Still looks good to me. Chart still looks nice and bullish, nice consolidation. Um, Again, this decreasing volume on consolidation is good. The big volume with the rip up, decreasing volume, and I think it's prime for a move potentially starting next week or the week after. Maybe starting next week and then going going on for who knows how long. Depends on the, the gamma the gamma ramp that can be, be built and what GME is doing, what the rest of the market is doing, and all that. Uh, GME, I, I still think, is about primed to go potentially starting next week also. I was kind of hoping for like $17 today or Monday um, to go long. Not sure if we'll see that big of a move to the downside before move up. So uh, I did scale in a little bit more today. Still have a large amount of capital to go into shares for a swing, but I'm holding off because I think Monday, yeah, I'd like to see what Monday brings. Um, but yeah, today Jimmy was very weird actually. Very, very low volume and the strangest, most flat price action I've ever seen on GameStop. I've never seen this like this. And just no volume. Not sure if this has to do with all those deep out of money puts expiring or just, yeah, being a massive OPEX or what, but this was very unusual. Um, video will cut. I will end the video before the end of day, but there might be something crazy that happens end of day or even after hours uh, with, with a lot of different stocks. So, um, yep, cover calls from yesterday on BBY. If you remember, I did close them today up 80%. I don't, I, I don't, I didn't need to hold it for the last 20%, just in case it rallies. I think that was like $600 in ADA from two days, which is awesome. 
so I'm out of that. Um, my cash recurred puts on BBY I rolled over yesterday. I rolled those to February 3, and I was able to roll them down a strike through seven and a half. Um, so that's awesome. And then my cash recurred puts on GME actually I closed. Let's see, are those from today? Yeah, I closed them. No, I closed them yesterday. I was gonna open up more today, thinking it was gonna be red, but it wasn't. So I might just forego doing cash secured puts. It might just go straight to shares for a swing, um, depending on how Monday and Tuesday look. If Tuesday's getting volatile and it looks like it's we're gonna start ripping, I'll just go to shares. If it's kind of stagnant, low volume still, uh, I might just open some cash secured puts and ride some theta and farm while we wait. Uh, but yeah, here's the. So I, I have a lot of capital in here ready to swing some GME shares. Um, and uh, yeah, BBY short puts in there. And then I opened up some more. Well, I closed my, my GME put for next week. Um, yesterday I would have gotten a better price on it. Again, but I thought today was gonna be more red. Yesterday it was up like 80 something percent. Today it was up, I think 56% I closed it for. Still not bad. Um, then I opened up some more puts next week for margin. 15 and a half puts. So if it does dump, I'll be able to make money on these and then I'll just get some more for margin. For my Hellbiz shares, I still have, they're only up 6%. Um, I did sell my, uh, yeah, my GNS. Um, let's see, what did I do today? Oh yeah, so I got, I started getting some some calls today, call debit spreads on GME. I averaged into my February 3, 2022, 30 call debit spreads. And there's the Hellbiz shares. There's the puts, there's the Salt Genius. Oh, and there's the puts I closed. I also closed my Carvana shares. I was down a little bit on it, did the cover call on it, but I just wanted to increase capital in this account so I can do some trading, I guess, and move stuff around. Um, so here's the 2230s that I opened up on GME. So max profit will be if GME is at 30 and by February 3rd, be 4,200. Um, if we are getting a big move up like we did in March, like right here, which is 150%, um, that would put us closer to 40. So I might get some more higher expectations of exposure. Does that make any sense? Yeah, I might get some higher <laughs> higher exposure uh, next week, which would give me you know more max profit around 40 instead of 30. Because the other ones, the, the gains cap out at 30. So it would basically just be my, my short call would be closer to 40, like 40, and then maybe my long call would be up at like 23 or 24. Um, or maybe I'll just get some long calls, like 23 strike. Uh, yeah, so that's that. Oh, and then the futures. Remember I had that, the short ES, MES from here. We opened them right here yesterday. I was stoked. Opened up four of them, thing came down. It was up like 1,200 here, and then aftermarket, all this, kept dumping. I think they were up like just over two grand here at four of them. We start bouncing, and then, oh, and that, yeah, that was yesterday. Never mind, that was two days ago. This was yesterday. And then today, OPEX, and we just rip. So um, I was actually averaging into them today, but I'm not too sure. With how bullish this is, we might have a, a gap up and a rally on Monday. So I might get stopped out of it, unfortunately. But I did average up, and uh, I averaged right here was my first average, right here. Saw so it hitting that resistance and, and topping. I'm already way up on the play, so I'm fine to average on where I think would be the top, where I'm trying to time the top. Whereas normally if I'm opening a position, I'm not trying to time the tops or bottoms. I'm more looking at the top and then waiting for more confirmation. So some momentum to the right way. So I got one more contract here that I shorted, rallied up, busted through there. Got one more here at this resistance I thought could be a top. Didn't, busted through that and rallied. And then I got one more right here. That engulfing and that inverted hammer and, and everything like that. So ended up getting, uh, I guess three, four, yeah, three more today. So now it's turning into like a, a normal sized ES. But that said, I mean, the daily chart here, we haven't flipped bearish on the MACD. It's it's not super bearish. We still have this kind of head and shoulders. Like I'm still thinking it's coming down, but uh, I'm less confident. I was hoping this head and shoulders right here, head, shoulder, shoulder, and this thing kind of blew through it. Not to say, couldn't, you couldn't still say that's a head and shoulders, but uh, we did flip bullish on the MACD there. We got green over the nine on the hourly. So hourly, this thing, I don't know if if it gaps. I mean, now that the options have expired, I, I can see it going either way, pretty pretty big. So, little gap up, and I'll be closed out of these things, unfortunately. And if it does that, then it, it might just rip and break 400. 
if it breaks 400 and goes like we're in a bear market rally we'll probably get to that 408 in a hurry um with all these little small caps moving like that wouldn't move the spy but could move iwm could could have movement on on stuff i don't know spy looked crazy today so anyways here they are i have seven of them now I'm only up 451 dollars on it that so today I'm down 1500 but since i averaged in at such, such high prices uh if if spy does come back down to these levels uh, it'll be quite a bit more about double what i had here not quite but um yeah so that's how that works that's what's nice because there's no there's no expiration there's no theta like i can just average and i have a stop limit to basically at about break even and i can just keep averaging if i all the way up until it gets my stop basically which is a nice uh nice opportunity cosmos ripper day looks like it's coming down gns is there yeah that's what i got guys have a good weekend jump on our twitter if we do a twitter spaces we'll see you on discord peace out